What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Jersey Boys Outdoors. Today we are down here on beautiful LBI with Bayside Dave. We're going to be giving you everything you need to know about surf fishing for stripers. With striper season coming up here in the fall, this is something you're not going to want to miss. Hey, if you are a novice striper fisherman, you're going to want to watch the entire video. If you're pretty experienced but want to learn a couple of things uh, how to do differently, take a look at the chapters below on the red line. You can skip ahead to where you need to learn more. So then, uh, in mind, stay tuned and we'll get into this. All right, guys, so before we even get to the beach, there are several things that you need to take with you, and Dave's going to give us the rundown on what you need to bring with you. Go ahead, Dave. Well, first of all, get a good set of waders. You're dealing with the ocean. You're dealing with waves. You might have to get right down to the, to the surf to, to, to pull a fish in. You're going to have waves breaking all over you. Get a good set of waders. Good set of waders. Make sure you have a good belt. The yep. belt has to be there to stop water from rushing down into the waders in case you end up falling into the surf. Water can just gather into your waders, go right down to the legs. You'll never be able to get out of the water again. A tight belt will, will, will stop that from happening. Make sure you get good, good quality, whatever you buy. All right, now as far as gear is concerned, there's, there's just the least amount of thing you need to, to bring to the beach you can put in a bucket. I have a cart here set up that I use to bring all my gear out to the beach, but I still have the bucket here, which has the least amount of things I need to bring. Yeah, because lots of times when you're coming down to the surf here, you're, you're, you're carrying all this stuff with you. So you don't, you don't want to bring your entire tackle box if you don't have to. Exactly. Right. Now, right. safety first, bring a first aid kit. Very Band important. Band-aids, whatever. Very important. Very important. Um, rigs, you have your rigs all set up here. Sometimes the line will snap, something will happen. Bring extra rigs. I keep my rigs in a Ziploc bag. There's many different ways to keep rigs. This is what I do. I keep them in a Ziploc bag. Um, sinkers i just have a little thing here with sinkers on it sinkers in it different sizes make sure you bring the different sizes according to what the water is doing you might need a heavier sinker you might need a lighter sinker bring a couple of each size as far as other gear you always want to have a, a set of pliers to be able to take hooks out of the fish's mouth wear that on your belt decent set of pliers that, that you can get that won't rust made out of aluminum made specifically for fishing so it, 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 it won't rust and uh, keep in good shape here on the beach. That's very important. Otherwise, otherwise you're buying a new set of pliers every time you come out to the beach because they're going to rust up exactly. on you. Or they're rusty you and you're out there on the beach and you're trying to use them and they're not working. <laughs> right, right, right. Get a good set of pliers that, is, that are made for fishing. Or bring a WD-40, either way. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then when, you're hand, when you handle a big fish, sometimes you need a jaw clamp. Have it here on your belt. Don't put it on a clip. A lot of these jaw clamps have these little adjusters on them. I always bring the adjuster up, up near the near the plier and I, and I pop that adjuster through the, through my belt up to the top the belt is tight enough to hold that on there as, as I'm walking if I need if I need to use it to retrieve a fish I just grab the pliers pop it right out of the belt and retrieve the fish and we're hoping we're hoping to catch some monster stripers here so yes that's we are. very important to be able to control that fish yes we are and uh, any size fish it's always good to ha have a set of clamps uh, to, to grab the jaw of that fish for sure. All right, so now that we know as far as what our cart needs to look like, what we need to bring as far as tackling gear goes, now we're gonna take a look at rod and reel setup, get you started out in the surf. All right guys, so now that we know what you need as far as the, the, the tackle and the cart and everything, we're gonna look at rod and reel setups, which is very important when it comes to striper fishing. Uh, Dave, what, what kind of rod and reel setup do you have here and what would you recommend? Well, basically what we have here is a 10 foot surf casting rod, uh, 10 foot, 11 foot, 12 foot are, are the size rods that you're looking for. And you're looking for a rod that has the rating to throw at least a six ounce sinker, if not eight ounce to 10 ounce. But the least amount of rating that you want to find is, is uh, six to eight ounce. When you go to your local bait and tackle shop, you can buy a combo. You don't have to spend a lot of money on a rod and reel, but you don't want to get cheap. You want to be able to rely on your equipment. So get a good so get a good quality setup. There are pen reel combo setups that, that a lot of these tackle shops have. Tsunami makes a great rod um, that, that, that's reliable. You're looking at rods in, in the $100 range, give or take. Um, and reels, as far as I'm concerned, get as quality as you can without breaking the bank. You're probably looking at a $200 reel, give or take, 150 to 225 is probably what you're going to spend on a reel. The size reel is going to be the 5,000 or 6,000 series. Okay. All right. So, so yeah, we're looking about that 300 $350 range for a full setup. 
exactly. ready to go, and you got something that's going to last, not something that's just going to you're going to throw away after the season. This is something that's going to give you a couple of years at least. Yeah, you want quality that you can rely on because when you're out on the beach, you don't want anything to break down, and you want to be able to rely on it, and so you can spend hours on the beach catching big fish. Right. Okay. Now, one last thing: how important is it to have a good long handle on that rod? Very important because when you're casting, you're using the rod to do the work. It's not your arm that that you're just. That, that you're throwing. You're not using the power of your arm to throw. Right, because there's big weights here, too. You're, yeah, you're, you're using the power of the rod. And in order in order to cast properly, you need a, you need a longer handle, and it's, it's all about pulling the bottom of the handle and pushing the top of the handle. That creates the rod bend, which is called the load, as, as you go to throw it. And then as you extend and release the line, the load will, will react, and actually the rod will be throwing the, 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 the uh, be, be throwing the rig Right. No, Rather it'll... than relying on just your arm doing it. It's actually the rod doing the work. The long handle does okay. the work. It helps the rod load up. Okay. And then last thing, line. What, I mean, what, what type of line? I mean, we're handling some big fish here. What kind of line do we, do we want to load our uh, reel up with? Well, I like using a braided line. Braided line is very strong. It's thin. And because of that, it casts, very, it casts far. 20-pound um, test is the least that you want to use. I use 30-pound test. I'm catching heavier fish, I'm throwing heavier baits. Um, you don't want that to snap while you're casting, and you right. certainly don't want to snap while you're reeling in a fish. <laughs> All right, and uh, I mean, is there any specific brand that you recommend for uh, for line? A lot of guys like to use the Power Pro. That, that's a great brand to use. Yep. I'd start that's out my out favorite. using Power Pro for sure. Okay. All right, good deal. All right, guys, so now that you're set up to ready to get on the water, now we're going to take a look at where on the surf you want to fish. All right, so now that we know what we need to bring onto the beach, okay, Dave, I walk onto the beach, and man, I, I look at this, and all I see is water, right? I, I, you tell me, hey, there's a hole here, there's a, there's a bar there, I can't see it. So I need you to explain to me and to everyone out there, you walk onto the beach, what does Bayside Dave look for in the water? Well, basically, the structure of the beach, uh, you, have, um, you have sandbars that form, and in front of the sandbars, between the sandbar and the beach, a trough is formed, which is which is where the where the sand drops down and ca and carries a, a, a column of water. And then you have what's called a hole, which forms at the end of the sandbar. The sandbar will drop down, form a hole where there's deep water, and then another sandbar will start to form again and run down the beach and create another trough. What happens is bait fish are looking to hide, hide from the uh, from the big fish. So they run up through the holes and they run up into the troughs and they hide behind the sandbars. The big fish know this. And what they'll do is they'll come in by through those openings where those holes are formed and turn and run up into those troughs along those sandbars and hunt for the bait fish. So when you come down to the beach here, you're gonna look for those areas. And the way you find those areas is how the waves break. Waves are always going to break first on the sandbars because they're higher in the water column. And as you look into the ocean here, you can see some of these waves are coming in. These are some lower rollers that are coming in. This is the deeper water. You can tell deeper water because it's darker. You're going to be able to see the deeper water. You're going to be able to see how dark it is. Why, as you come onto the beach, when you come onto the entrance ramp, stop up there for about five minutes. Look at the water. Watch the waves come in. Look at the color of the water. See where the dark water is. See where the waves break. Like I said, waves break onto the sandbar. Right now we have waves breaking. Waves are going to break even into the hole areas, into the deeper holes because that's still coming up from where the ocean is. As you can see the water here, we got waves breaking. Those waves are breaking on the sandbars. And then they, then they dissipate and they come across the deep water, which is the trough. If you're having a, if you're having a trouble finding out where the sandbar ends and where the hole starts, Stand at the surf line, look perpendicular to the ocean, and as you look down the beach, you're going to notice how there are sections of the ocean of the waves that come up higher onto the beach than they do in other sections. That's where the hole is. That's where the sandbars end and the hole starts. Sandbars stop waves from coming up high on the beach. So when you see that section of beach that curves in where the waves are coming up higher on the beach, that's the hole. Where that, where that section starts to cut in and get closer to the ocean, that's where the sandbar starts. That's where you want to throw your bait. 
where that sandbar starts. So if I'm looking down the beach and I see a real nice inswing, yes. I want to set up basically right, right on where the that point of that inswing. Right where that inswing starts. Okay. Not, not to where it's up high, but where it's down low. That's where that inswing starts. That's where that sandbar ends. That's where big fish come in through that hole, turn up the end of that sandbar and run up the trough. I always like to throw my bait right at the end of that sandbar, whether it's in, into the trough a little bit or into the hole a little bit. That whole section there is where those fish are coming in, and that's the first thing they're going to see is your bait. Right. Okay, so you're not necessarily looking, you don't have to get all the way out past the breakers. No, not at all. Yeah. Um, obviously, you want to get out closer to the sandbar, but as long as you're in that trough, those fish are in there. They're not just edging along that, that sandbar, like, oh, I have to get it out to that sandbar, and if I have it in any closer, I'm not going to catch fish. That's not right. Those fish are all within that sandbar, some, all within that trough, I'm sorry. I've caught fish 20 feet off, off the beach, in the middle of that trough. 20 pound, 25 pound stripers. 10, 20 feet off the beach, they hit my bait. Because there's water there, there's deep water. The shallows, those big fish don't go run up on those shallows. There's no reason to, there's no bait fish up there. So no, you don't have to cast out to England. Right. <laughs> Just get it out there in the deep water. I think that's a common misconception. I mean, you know, you hear these guys, oh, you got to have this, you know, 18 foot rod because you got to get it way yeah. out, you know, to England, like you were saying. Right. But that's not true. That, it's, that's not always the case. No, it, it's not. And honestly, the only reason why you would have to do some long casting is at lower, lower tides. Right, okay. Where you don't have a lot of deep water in here, but you know fish are running. That's when you're going to go into where those holes are, towards the end of those sandbars. And that's when you're going to haul that bait as far out as you can because a lot of times during the lower tides the, the bait fish aren't making their way in around those sandbars they're making their way up to the sandbars and and the fish are feeding along those edges of those sandbars got it okay so guys it looks like higher tides you ain't got to cast that far you got to look for that first trough fish right there right on the edge of the holes lower tide got to cast out farther so now that we know what we need, where we need to use it, we're gonna look at how to use it, what kind of rigs are set up with, where to cast, and uh, what kind of bait to use. All right guys, so now we're ready to get to our baiting section. So Dave, what kind of bait are we looking to bring out here and how are we looking to cut it up? Basically two types of bait. You got bunker and you got clam. Clam did very well this spring, but bunker also is a very good bait to use. Okay. In, in the fall, we find that that uh, using bunker is is the key bait to use. Okay. Um, good tip. So fresh bunker or frozen bunker. Always try to get fresh, but the frozen bunker is is usually frozen while it's fresh. So if that's all the bait shop has, get the frozen bunker. Bunker. There you go. Bait fish. Very smelly. Very tasty <laughs> for fish. I said, yeah, the stripers think so anyway. Um, there's there's two different types of bait, different ways to bait bunker. Use the bunker head or use chunks of bunker. Both work very well. I have a cut a setup here where I have a little bit of a cutting board. I have a little bit of a basket to catch my bait as I cut it up. Good bait knife, serrated, or even a, even a good sharp bait knife like this that has like the serrated on, on the air if you're going to go going through the bones but I like the, you like that you prefer a serrated I, knife I, I like the serrated knife because you're always cutting through bones okay now when you're, you're fishing with bunker head it's not just the head behind the gill here you want to take some meat with it a lot of times if if i go when i buy bunker if i see the smaller bunker i like buying the smaller bunker because of this i'll just cut the bunker right in half just go right right down the fish like that guts and all beautiful and I'll show you how to hook that onto the rig. Okay. All right, so now is that, that's our head. Now, we we're looking to use just chunks of bunker. Can we now salvage that? Are you hooking that entire back end on a, on a hook as well? No, I, I'll, I'll, I'll cut that into chunks. Okay. Same, same cut, about an inch down, the whole length of the, the whole width of the fish. Okay. That's your chunk right there. Leave the guts on. Anything like that is going to attract your fish. Awesome. Now, that's awesome. bunker. And that's you're recommending bunker for for fall, right? And that's, that's I would your say I would say bait. I would say go with bunker for sure. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Now we're gonna take a look at how we're gonna put that on the hook. All right, guys. Now that we got our bait cut, we're gonna see how exactly we put this on a circle hook. Because Dave, circle hooks are regulations on New Jersey. 
Yes, they are. Uh, it's it's a reg it's it, it's it's the rule. It's the law right. that if you're fishing for stripers, you must use circle hooks. Circle hooks have the point and the barb facing towards the shaft of the hook. What that does is it stops the hook from gut hooking from hooking into the into the throat of the fish. And when the fish gets the bait in its mouth, this gap here must be exposed enough so that as the hook comes out of the fish's mouth, and it's always not gonna be on an angle because of how your line is coming in to the beach, it's always gonna be on an angle so that as it comes out of the fish's mouth, it's gonna hook onto the jaw, right, and it's, it's not gonna right be, it, and it's gonna set right in the jaw or in the lip of the fish. Right. Right, and it's very important, like you were saying, to have that gap exposed in, in between the hook and the, and the shaft there. Yeah, you, you, you don't want to put bait on. Right, I was going to say, yeah, show, show us how, how exactly we put this bunker on Yeah, here. you don't want to put bait on at the thick part of the fish here where you have that whole gap right. all covered up by bait because now you have nothing, no gap here to, to grab the jaw of that fish. If you're going to use chunk bait, Go down to the slim end. You got two layers of skin here. That's going to hold really good, especially with fresh bunker or frozen bunker. It's going to be in good, good enough shape to stay onto that hook. Get that onto the hook there, down into the center of that spot there. Poke that hook through both pieces of skin. Right. Get it up into 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 the into the throat of that hook. Now you have a gap there. That that fish is going to grab that bait, get it into the mouth. And as it comes out, you got the gap there to hook that fish up. Very important, very important. Okay, now, now how are we, are we doing the same thing with the head, or how, how are we head, hooking the head on there? Yeah, the head's different now, of course. Okay, let's let's let's, let's take a look at that. How do we how are we doing? And that what one? I have here, let me just rinse my hand. Very important cleanliness. Yeah, gotta make sure you stay clean. I always, I always have a bucket. Of, <laughs> I always have an uh, uh, an empty bucket with me when I bring to the beach. Put some salt water in there. Have it right next to me. Always keeping my hands clean. There you go. You don't want to get that stuff all over your equipment. This, there's two different types of rigs here I have. This is a fish finder rig. This has a slider that goes onto the line, which holds the sinker. Clip on the end, which holds the rig. The rig I have here is just a short line, 60 pound test. That's the, that's the lightest test I'm gonna use when I'm making rigs like this. This is a 9-0 hook. I use at least a 7-0, 8-0, 9-0 hooks for bait fishing for stripers. This is a 9-0 hook. I'm using big baits. I want a big hook. Now, is this is this fluoro or mono? Uh, this is this is fluoro. Okay, 60-pound uh, fluorocarbon. 60-pound fluorocarbon. Uh, tied with a barrel swiver on top. S snell the hook on the bottom. You could buy these pre-made. I make up all my own rigs. A lot of the pre-made rigs have this rig line length a lot longer than this. Right. I make mine shorter because I find in the rough water, as I leave the bait out there, reel it back in, this gets all spun around yeah. and it gets all tangled up. I find with these shorter lengths, six, four, to, four to six inches, still keeps your bait down on the bottom, still keeps it away from the sinker, and, it, and it's effective with catching fish. The way these fish finder rigs work is the slider enables the fish to pick up the bait without picking up the sinker. And I have my, I have my um, drag set up very loose when it's in, in the rod holder so that the fish can pick it up and run with the bait without feeling any, any pressure. That's when you, in turn, grab that, tighten up the sinker. We'll talk about that a little later. And that's what this fish finder is for. This is able to, the, the, the fish picks it up and runs with the bait. It's not picking up the, the sinker. Now, we're gonna be putting bunker head on. This is the rig I like to use when I'm fishing with bunker head. Bunker head, hook it in the jaw. The jaw has two bones that run under the chin here. You're gonna go between those two bones. You're gonna go up about, three, about an inch or so, as, as far up as you can. And you gotta turn that so that point of that hook gets up into that chin. Keep it deep into the head so that the point of that hook comes up between the eyes or just below below where the eyes are, where it pops through. Okay. Just like that. That's how you want to hook up a bunker head. It's nice. good to do it this way because 
some guys will hook the bunker head up through here or up through here which is fine but what happens is when that when that fish head is laying on the bottom and you got current running that jaw opens up and starts to push that that bait around and that could tw twist around your fish finder rig and get all tangled up which doesn't help when you're reeling in the fish if you are going to hook up your fish to either the back or the bottom here cut the jaw off so that doesn't happen okay all right so now that we know how to hook up bunker we're going to take a look at how to uh, hook up clam because it's going to be slightly different so uh we'll take a look at that now all right clam clam you can get salted clam you can get fresh clam both work fine i use salted clam stays well you can keep it in your freezer it's not going to freeze hard that where you have to thaw it out the salt is going to keep it from freezing hard clam you got the tongue of the clam you got all the body you got all the strings and all that stuff you want to use all that so what what i like to do is on the bigger pieces i'll cut them right down the center that i have two 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 pieces of clam with the tongue the tongue is the stiffer part of the clam that's what's going to keep it on the hook all this other stuff is going to attract the fish what i'll do is just going to quick cut that in half like i said and i have two pieces here you got the tongue and you got all the mushy stuff this is another rig i have here this is a high low rig or a chicken rig this has two dropper loops and a sinker on the bottom this keeps it up off off the off the, the bottom and what you want to do is with the clam you start out with the mushy end put that on the hook give it a turn put the tongue end through that's the stiff part of the bait that's going to keep it on that the barb is going to is going to lock into that as it tries to slide off the hook slide that clam up onto the shaft of the hook and create that gap that you need okay. for a circle hook. And so you all, slide it and spin it to the back. Spin it to the back so you have that so you have that um, so you have that gap with the circle hook. In order to keep that up onto the shaft, you need to use tie line. And let me show you about tie line. I, I have some in my bucket yep. here. Let me just grab it. a handy bucket there, we'll get out of tie line. All right, so here's tie line. Tie line is elastic. It stretches. That helps keep it on the on the hook without having to tie knots. I get about a two inch section of it. N nice little pair of scissors I like to keep with me. Flip that tie line off. And now you want to tie that on, onto the hook. In order to keep that bait up onto the shaft, the first thing you do is grab that tie line with your thumb. Every time you're working with tie line, pull it stretched. Now you're above, you're above the eyelet of the hook. That's where you want your first twist to be. Two or three times above the eyelet of the hook onto that, onto the rig line itself above the eyelet of the hook. Then you're going to turn the hook facing up, grab the eyelet of the hook, make sure that bait is up tight to the eyelet of the hook, up on that shaft. So you have that exposure there. You're gonna go around to the bottom of the bait and you're gonna twist that around about two or three times, always keeping this tight and stretched. Push that up, make sure it stays up tight onto the shaft. Go around the bait now, you're still keeping it stretched. Go around the bait a couple times. Go around the bait a couple times. Now you're gonna go back up above the eyelet onto that, onto that rig line, onto that, onto that mono test and you're going to wrap it as many times as you have line keeping it very tight and when you get to the to the end that's going to stay on to the that's going to that's going to act like a knot because it was stretched and now the stretch is, is keeping that on there now you have that up on the shaft of that hook and you have enough hook exposed to to, to hook that fish now that you use that same method if it turns out that the bunker you're using is soft and it keeps flying off the hook, that skin isn't keeping it on the hook, you need to use tie line. Here's how you do it with the bunker. 
And now, is this something you would do with a high low rig here, Dave? You would actually put on a clam and a, pe and a, and a piece of bunker? No, not necessarily. Um, I'm just doing this to show you guys uh, how to tie this on properly. Right, right. If I'm, if I'm out fishing for stripers and I'm using bunker, I always bring two poles with me. I always have the one pole with the slider on it, with the bunker head, and then my other pole has a high low rig where I have chunk on it. And I cast this way with the one rod and I cast that way with the other rod. That way if fish are eating bunker head, you got it set up on this side. If, if, if fish are catching chunk a lot more, then you got it set up on this side. Got it. You're still using bunker, you're putting a lot of scent in the water and it, it works really well. Now like I said, if it turns out, boy this bunker's soft, it keeps flying off the hook. Even though I'm hooking it here, I'm hooking it there, it keeps popping off, I got to tie it on. So what you do is, go to the, go to the top part here again, poke the rod through, poke the hook through, and then poke it through again the same side, and slide that up onto the shaft. Okay. Again, I'm not going to go through it all, but you're going to wrap the line around, you're going to wrap the uh, tie line around the top part here, and then you're going to wrap it around the bottom part here, keeping the, keeping the meat up on the shaft, and then you're going to wrap it around the meat, and, and finish up the, the wrap above the above. eyelet of the hook to, to keep that bunker set up on the, on the shaft of the hook so this hook is exposed enough that when the hook, fish grabs the bait, it gets hooked up easy on the jaw of the fish. All right, and tie line, that's something you can get at your uh, local bait and tackle shop, correct? Oh, yeah. Correct? It, either, it either comes in a little wrap like this or it comes in like a kind of a spool looking, looking wrap. It's basically a stretch tie line very important to have with you when you're on the beach, especially when you're fishing with circle hooks, to keep that bait up on the shaft of the hook, to keep this part of the hook exposed to make this circle hook work properly. All right, all right guys, now, now that we know what kind of rigs we're using, what kind of bait we're using, we're gonna take a look at how to cast the pole and how to set up once you're actually ready to get your pole in the water. All right, guys, so now that we got everything ready to go, we know where we're fishing, we know what we're fishing with, how we're fishing it. Dave, we're ready to cast out in the water. What do we got to do? Okay, here we are. Got my 11-foot rod. I got my bunker head on here. The most important thing you want to do before you cast is tighten up your drag so it doesn't inhibit you from casting. I'm going to reel up until I have about at least three feet of line hanging. Okay. You, want to, you want to have that up tight. You want to use that, that that'll help get, get that, that out there. Turn your bail so the line is up close to the rod. Put your finger on it. Open up your bail. Now you're ready to cast. Put your hand on the very end of the rod. That's where that long handle comes in. And this is where the long handle comes in. What happens is you bring the rod back behind you rod will load up as you go to throw it and you're gonna let the rod do the work just move the rod as, as fast as you can using the weight of the sinker and the bait to throw the your line in now that made it out almost out to the to the sandbar and you can see I didn't run with the rod I didn't <laughs> I didn't, I didn't here, right? grunt and scream and throw as hard as I could. I used the rod to throw the bait. The more you do this, the more you're going to get the feel for it. The first few times, you're not going to feel it right away. You're going to get that aha moment when you finally cast out and, that, and that, lot, that bait goes flying out there and you didn't work hard to do it and you realize that, oh my God, the rod just did it. Right. Now, you can see I didn't close my bail yet because I want to be able to walk up to the sand spike without pulling my sinker out of the sand. Once that sinker hits the water, it's going to go down to the bottom and the speed of the thing dropping down is going to bury that sinker into the sand. You don't want to pull that back out of the sand. So you're going to keep the, keep the bail open until you get it back to your rod holder. Here we are at the sand spike. Bring the rod up, slide it into the sand spike and close your bail. Now you want to get the slack out of your line. So start reeling in, keeping an eye on it as you're reeling it in. Make sure that you're going to see a bow in the line that the wind creates 
and the bow in that line continues down into the water. So you're gonna keep reeling it in. I always like to do it gently with my hand here, guiding it so I'm not pulling too hard with the reel until I get all the tension out of the, uh, all the slack out of the line. So now it's tight. The waves are gonna pull at it too. Let the waves do their work. Keep, keep reeling it in until you got all the tension out of it. There you go, now it feels tight on the bottom. Don't, don't keep pulling it because you're gonna pull that sinker out. Now you have your drag set tight, that's not good. You wanna loosen it up. So what I do is I count half turns. I'm gonna go one, two half turns, and I'm gonna pull on it. That's pretty loose. I wanna have it set. I wanna know where it's set when I, set when I fight the fish. So you wanna kinda of have it a little tight. I'm gonna do a half a turn back, and I'm gonna pull on it. And I'm, I'm pulling on it pretty hard, but it's still letting some line out. That's where you wanna fight your fish, all right? Keep that in mind. That's where you wanna fight the fish. But it's still not loose enough for the fish to grab the bait and run with it. So I'm gonna do one, two half turns and check it. Now look how easy that pulls out. That's where you want it. Now you know that when the rod starts going and shaking that you have a fish on, two half turns is as far as you can turn it without snapping the line. One, two. Now you know if I do a third turn, it's gonna to be too tight and you're gonna snap that line. Always keep that in mind. Know where you have your drag set to fight the fish. Then you do your one or two, whatever it takes to get that pulling out easy so when the fish grabs the bait, it, it runs and it's not impeding the fish from running. Now you know, all right, it was two half turns. That's as far as I can turn to fight that fish. You're all set and ready to go catch fish. All right, so final thing, we got everything set right in the water. Now, hopefully we get a hit, we got a fish yeah. on, we got a circle hook though. So how is the, what is the best way to set that hook on a circle hook? Because I know lots of times, guys when you go and just yank on yeah. that thing, that's gonna rip it right out of its mouth. So what's the best way to set the hook on a circle hook? Exactly. Now when you're here at the water line and you got your bait in and you're sitting in your chair, I like to be sitting a little bit away, away from the rod because I don't want to sit there and strain my neck looking at the top of the rod, right next to my rod and waiting for the thing to, to hit. You want to be a little bit more comfortable. I'll go back about 10 feet and, and hang out, sit down, whatever, so at least I don't have to look up straight up to see my rod going. Now you're at the beach here, you got waves coming in, you got current. Your rod is going to react to the waves, it's going to react to the current. That's not a fish. Right. When I first started fishing the surf, Every time my rod moved, I jumped up on the grab because I thought that was a fish. Right, right, right. You know when you have a fish. Right. A fish is going to pick up the bait and run. It's going to panic because it's got something in its mouth that's going to start shaking. The rod tip is going to show that. It's going to go down. It's going to stay down. It's going to pull line off. That rod is going to start wiggling. That's a fish. You have a circle hook on there. <laughs> yeah, calm the nerves. Calm, calm the nerves, the nerves right, down. Right, right, right. No reason to set that hook. Now you have that drag set real loose that's not going to reel that fish in. You got to do that to those two turns. That tightens it up to the, to the drag that you want to fight the fish. Now take your rod out of your spike. Keep the tension on. Don't just drop your rod down. Grab the handle. As you drop your rod down, keep that tension on. Now that fish is on, has that bait in its mouth, but the hook isn't set yet. That's a circle hook. That's not going to set until it drags out of the fish's throat and grabs the jaw. In order for that to, to do that property, you have the rod, you just reeled in your tension. Now grab the rod with two hands and keep it low and just sweep it off to the side. That, that hook is gonna make its way out of the jaw, the, the, the fish's throat. It's gonna make its way out to the jaw because that line is low and on an angle. It's gonna hit the, hit the jaw, it's gonna hit the lip, it's gonna set. You're gonna, you're gonna pull, you're not gonna yank, you're not gonna right. set. It's you're a sweeping keep, motion. It's a sweeping motion, it's to create tension in order for that hook to, to set properly. Now you have the fish on, keep the tension tight, fight that fish and land it, baby. There you go. All right, guys, well, that concludes our tutorial on how to surf fish and stripers. We really, really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it has been an absolute pleasure to be with you, Dave. Dave, if the people out there wanna find more about you, where can they find you at? You can find me on Facebook, Bayside Dave, or I have a Facebook group page that does a lot of uh, surf fishing reports on Long Beach Island. It's called Surf Fishing LBI with Bayside Dave. And I also have a, um, an Instagram, at Bayside Dave, 
and I do uh, YouTube videos, Bayside Dave. <laughs> so basically, you start attending Bayside Dave, yeah. this man's gonna come up. Guys, I'll tell you what, he really knows his stuff. He knows everything there is to know about star fishing. Dave, we really appreciate it. Thank Thanks. you so much for coming out here with us. Thanks for having me. Good luck, guys. Yeah, good fish. luck, everybody. We'll see you on the next video.